Hi everybody, this is John Carter, and welcome to today's edition of Simpler Stock. So, what do we got cooking? What do we got going on? And, well, we have a market that's kind of grinding into the FOMC numbers, um, which will be released tomorrow. Kind of a big question on everybody's mind is, you know, is the Fed going to come out and say, you know what, things are starting to get a little hot and heavy here, so we should look at... Uh, starting to tighten interest rates. And you can tell this because of the way TLT is acting. So TLT here is selling off in a big way. And the reason is that that's what they're looking for. So I actually think that um, the FOMC is not going to do that. And I like the idea of actually buying this uh, tomorrow into that FOMC, knowing that we could actually have some more selling here, but obviously just kind of taking a small position. In terms of something that's less risky, uh, let's go through and just look at the sectors and get an idea of what markets are doing what. So for financials, uh, the big thing here that's really helped the market, especially over the last several weeks, has been a recovery in financials. And a lot of this has to do with a, stable, a stabilizing in the price of oil. Now, the unknown here is how long will oil stabilize? So at this point, all the oil industry cares about and all banks care about, which have $5.4 trillion, that's with a T, in exposure to oil-related loans, all they care about is for, you know, please oil, stop going down. And even though it's not at $80 a barrel, if it could stabilize at 50 and just stop going down, that would at least allow cooler heads to, to prevail, prevail. And uh, if I get that word right, and now they could actually, you know, because when it's when it keeps falling every day, that 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 brings panic. But if it levels off, then they can plan around, you know, they can hedge and, and all that kind of fun stuff. So, so that's the big thing there. And once oil um, stabilized, that's when banks and that's when the financial sector kind of started to kind of recover from some of that nervousness. Now, if oil rolls over and makes new lows, then it's a whole different ball game. But at least at this point, things have stabilized a little bit. Okay, and that of course has helped the energy sector, which although very very far from those highs, is recovering. And if we look at you know one of the some of the ones here that are like rig and stuff like that that took it on the chin, trying to stabilize here as well. Now, Rig just recently, I think it was this morning, they announced that they're getting rid of their CEO. And the poor guy, I mean, I think he's he was there for like five years. And while he was there, the rig exploded on the Gulf. And now the price of oil fell. And stuff that was completely out of his control. But, you know, the, you know they're slashing their dividend from, you know, like down 98%. And, the, of course, the stock price has fallen. But sometimes it's the luck of the draw. If you're the CEO of Apple, then you don't really have too much to complain about. If you're the CEO of Rig, life's kind of tough. And the other thing here that's also moving with TLT is bonds, it's not bonds, uh, utilities. So believe it or not, I do think that tomorrow with the FOMC minutes, there's going to be an opportunity here to buy utilities. Why? Because they are following the bond market in terms of yield. So if bonds actually rally, look for utilities to rally as well. Of course, financials continue to be strong here. They um, have actually punched through this fire line, which is a pretty big resistance level, and that opens up the door for additional kind of creepingly higher prices. XLB, also a big part of this rally. Um, a lot of these stocks have participated in this move. And then um, what I love here is, so with XLP, which is the in the consumer segment here, you've just got a lot of great consolidation uh, by a lot of great names. And so what I'm looking for here is that when, you know, basic materials, which have been leading the way higher, when they need to catch a breather, then look for this sector to break out. Okay, and we're talking here the usual suspects, uh, Walmart, um, which I, I think is poised here for another nice move. Um, CVS, uh, that's, this is a I mean, great, great uh, price action there. And then XLY, kind of the same thing. It's been, a you know, from a weekly basis, you can see it just broke. And XLY, of course, um, Starbucks leading the charge on that. Uh, Home Depot leading the charge on that. And we're starting to see a little bit of catch up now from Priceline, although I don't know if that thing's gonna be able to break out or not. And then, of course, uh, Disney, uh, which I'm going to this weekend. So a lot of money just pouring into 
those stocks. And then for XLI, uh, this is one that's just been kind of consolidating, acting nice. And then XLV, which of course is healthcare, a sector that I love. And I think this one is just kind of ripe with opportunity. You can see that there is a daily squeeze there. Okay, so everything there looks really good. Now, what I wanted to do tonight is I've been looking at squeezes in our portfolio list of stocks. But what I want to do tonight is instead look at stocks that have a large percentage of mutual fund ownership. Okay, And if you go through and you, know, you bring up the spreadsheet here and you'll go through and you'll see the column. Um, let's see, where is it? percent owned by mutual funds and you can see here that uh, you know impacts laboratories is at zero and then as you scroll down um, you see these higher numbers here so what I did is I just highlighted kind of the highest ones and of course those are over here micro semi etc and then we're just gonna look at some of these and just kind of see how they're doing in relation to other stocks so a little different here and these may or may not have a squeeze but the main thing that we're looking at here is large percentage owned by funds and so you can see micro semi here like 94 percent owned by funds and the thing about this is that when you have funds piling into a stock like this they just don't sell funds are not playing you know they're not playing the five minute charts they're accumulating a position so this is a $2.8 billion market cap. The funds have poured in, and they're, they're in for the long haul. Okay, so that, that's, that's pretty good. LHO is called LaSalle Hotel Properties. Now, not as great looking as the one that we just saw, but you can see it recently had a nice weekly squeeze and recently worked its way higher. The thing to remember about these larger um, funds like this is they're not really looking to sell. They want to hold on. And the reason they want to hold on is that they do a lot of research and they see good things in the horizon. Okay, so HZO, this is Marine Max Incorporated, $695 million market cap, i.e. a lot of room there uh, to the upside. So GEO, this is a $3.3 billion company. Again, you can see that this is something that's been very, very steady. And when I see something like this that has large fund sponsorship, large fund ownership, then it's a real, really reassuring uh, time to buy the dips on those. Okay. Uh, let's look at DFT, which is DuPont Fabros Technology Inc. Now, this is one that's interesting. It recently, it may have had an earnings warning or something like that. And you can see that it recently sold off. Those can typically be opportunities in this type of and this type of ownership. So I'm going to keep an eye on that one and see how that one can do. Now, one that we actually have looked at that had a squeeze, ZUMZ. Uh, this one has a daily squeeze. Uh, this also is a billion dollar market cap, but also has got over 50% ownership by funds. And so this is something that becomes very, very nice uh, in, that type, in, in that type of environment. Because everything I just talked about with microsemi, yeah, there's no squeezes in microsemi, but guess what? With funds owning it, they aren't sellers, okay? And they're essentially taking supply off the market that way. Um, so another one here, SONC, uh, this is one that also has a daily squeeze and also has over 50% fund ownership, and that's something that I really like. And so now what I'm getting to here is that, you know, fund ownership is great, and now when you start combining um, a high fund ownership with something that has a squeeze, you have a really nice kind of bang for your buck there. And uh, this is something that looks fantastic because the squeeze of, is of course telling us that this thing is getting ready to move again. Uh, we also know that fundamentally, the, the funds have piled into this stock if, and for good reason. And you know they're generally not going to be sellers and that takes supply off the market and leads to um, higher and higher prices, all right? So, so that one was pretty good. Uh, let me see what else. I think VVI also, we've got funds over 50% and we've got a daily squeeze here. So you can see that this one is recovering and starting to work its way higher. All right, so that's just something to keep in mind. There's some good columns of information there. And finally, let's look at PSEM, which is Paracom Semiconductor. Now this is one that doesn't have an active squeeze. You can see the last one, we got high fund ownership here. Um, essentially took it from about 10 bucks up to 15, which is a really, really good move. And this is another one that I want to keep an eye on. Okay. So we've got the Fed minutes coming out. Um, those should be uh, interesting. I don't think it's going to be a huge event, but um, you know, keep an eye on TLT and that'll kind of tell us what the market is thinking. All right. You guys have a good night.